From Southeastern University, this is the Coach Bearfield Show with your host, Donnie Smith. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of the Coach Bearfield Show. I'm Donnie Smith. Joining us, the head coach of the 3-1 Southeastern University Fire Football Team, Coach Keith Bearfield. 37-7 win last Friday night over Concordia College. The defense, once again, as they did last week against Warner, stepping up and making some big plays for you. Well, we were very pleased with the way our defense played last week and, of course, this week. Uh, you know, they got things rolling with that uh, fumble recovery for a touchdown. And uh, like I said uh, last week, when you get our guys rolling, they're going to be very hard to stop. And, and things uh, for us begin to snowball in the right direction. For uh, Concordia, they went the other direction. We'll take a look at the highlight of the fumble recovery that you mentioned. Trishez Elzey scooping up that fumble, taking it into the end zone. His second consecutive week with a defensive score. He's kind of become a pretty prominent player in that inside linebacker spot. Well, he's very, very opportunistic. There's no doubt about that. And he's uh, made the best of his opportunities when uh, you're averaging uh, you know, a touchdown a week on, on the defensive side of the ball. That's, that's pretty good. Will Tills also had a pretty solid couple weeks at the inside linebacker spot, was named Sun Conference Defensive Player of the Week. We'll take a look. He had an interception, also had a school record 15 total tackles and three and a half for loss. He's been very active these first few games for you. Well, you know, Will Tillo came in a year ago as a true freshman and established himself as a, as a leader on the team. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, at the end of the season last year, uh, our team voted him team captain, and, and he's stepped in and he assumed that role. And he's, you know, he's just... Uh, a regular sophomore, you know, most most of our starters are redshirt sophomores, mm -hmm. and uh, but he's a, you know, he's played two years, started as a true freshman from day one, and uh, has just played consistently throughout, and we're really proud of the the work that he puts in, the leadership that he provides, and and also uh, very importantly is his play on the field. As you look back at the safety that they were able to create as well on defense, what were the keys to that drive? You had them backed up uh, thanks to a good punt. Also had him had burned two timeouts on that drive, and then were able to take advantage on the big play. Well, absolutely. You know, when you have a team backed up, and you know our kicking game is 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 vital to uh, to all of our success. You know, we we don't take it for granted when we say that uh, you know our kicking game is 33 and a third percent mm -hmm. of the the whole process. And uh, Caleb Winters does a great job punting as well as uh, filling the dual role as our place kicker. But he got them pinned down. Uh, we had excellent coverage. Got them in inside. Uh, inside the uh, five-yard line, very close to the, to the goal line, and our defense just, just stepped up. It's like you know, throwing blood to sharks when you get uh, teams backed up like that. And, uh, and what, what it you know, just showed is that our defense uh, is very much of a pressure defense. Mm -hmm. Concordia was feeling that. They didn't want to give up that safety. They wanted to at least be able to punt. They probably should have punted earlier in the, in the series of downs. When you look back at the offense, I think one of the big plays that stood out was the 90-yard touchdown reception by Jordan Phillips, a new victory field record. What was the key to getting that play to work? Well, you know, uh, Jordan ran an excellent route. Uh, he, was, he was open, and uh, Raylan, uh, you know, dropped back and uh, threw a perfect strike out there to him. And then, you know, Jordan had to go to work again and allude to defender mm -hmm. stay in bounds was the, the primary thing, and he, he accomplished that. And uh, then as... Uh, one of our uh, coaches said uh, during the film session, that's where those striders come in, our conditioning after mm -hmm. practice, and he was able to stride it out and then go the distance and outrun those guys, which you know, was, uh, was an outstanding play. The thing is, is you know, we're, we're getting very used to uh, uh, breaking school records. Of course, you know, last year, anything we did was a school record because we had never done it before, but we'd established some pretty good records and going into the season, 80 yards mm -hmm. uh, was the record for a touchdown completion, and we broke it uh, twice already. Looking at Jordan, he's kind of been a nice factor for you guys the, these first couple of games. Came in as a transfer from Malone at wide receiver, saw some time in the Warner game at running back, and then showing that he can make some big plays at his wide receivers as well. You can put him just about anywhere. Well, Jordan is a very versatile athlete, and we're learning more and more about him as we go. You know, he uh, uh, didn't get as much work as we wanted him to get in the spring. He uh, had an injury uh, about midway through, and, and so uh, the only film that we had seen of him was as a wide receiver, you know, at Malone. And so uh, this preseason, you know, we, we began to learn more and more about him. We had him slotted as a, as a backup to Dakota Duran in, in the slot. Uh, but the more opportunity that we've given him, the more he's picked up and showed us just exactly what he can do. And, and you know, he's, he's a threat anywhere we put him, in the backfield, at the slot, or at the wideout position. He's a very valuable member of our team. And, and not only that, but, uh, you know, he's a young man that uh, 
definitely uh, accepts any opportunity to to be a leader on the team and does the right things, uh, you know, on and off the field. Offensively, the return of quarterback Jonathan Pierce to the mix last week, that's got to be a big highlight. But it's also a nice luxury to have a redshirt freshman you can have stick in there, win you two games, and now you get an all-conference quarterback back. Well, you know, Raylan did a tremendous job uh, both games. You know, there's, there's things in his game that he needs to improve on, and I think uh, we, all, we all recognize that, and Raylan's working hard every day. But to have a young man of that capability to be able to step in and lead you, you know, in, in two very important games, especially the Warner game mm -hmm. in his very first start, our first conference game, and uh, – and then uh, for John to be able to come back and show that, you know, he's healthy, he's ready to go. We didn't uh, necessarily uh, want to start John, but we did want him to get some valuable playing time to, to knock any rust off that might come with being out for a week. So uh, we were pleased with that whole situation. No game on Saturday this week, Coach. How does practice and your schedule change, if at all? Well, practice doesn't change very much. You know, we have a a game in two weeks against Edward Water. So we've already formulated a preliminary game plan. Our practices Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are going to, to be the same uh, as any, any work weeks uh, that we have. The one thing that we have adjusted is that uh, our younger guys who aren't getting much playing time or maybe no playing time at all, uh, they're getting quite a bit more attention and they're getting some scrimmage time at the end of practice so we can develop our depth and uh, you know, find out just exactly what we have in those guys when, uh, as opposed to you know, preseason when you know, the guys that we felt like we wanted to go with were getting all the work. So that's a difference. Uh, but other than that, uh, and maybe uh, not being able to, to play a game on Saturday and having an extra rest day, uh, that's, that's about it. What are some of the things this week without an opponent that you're, you and your staff are going to be focusing on? Any details that you're looking to clean up? Well, you know, our focus, the number one, is Edward, is Edward Waters and what we can do there and making sure that we have a good preliminary game plan and we'll finalize that after, after the weekend. Uh, but, uh, you know, offensively, uh, you know, I think there are some areas that uh, we need to shore up and, and uh, need to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, we're hitting on all cylinders there. We haven't necessarily, at times we have hit on all cylinders, but more often than not, we may have one phase going and not the other phase, and we need to be able to put things together. You're going to have Edward Waters, as you mentioned, coming out of the break, back to Sun Conference play, so that's going to be a big game as you guys look to go 2-0 and in league play. Well, you know, we play on the road. Our first conference game on the road this year, so that makes it even, even bigger. Mm -hmm. as, and we're going to be playing on natural turf, which would be uh, a little bit different for us. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, Edward Waters plays point this weekend. Uh, We'll have a chance to, uh, to look at them against uh, a common opponent that we'll be facing. It'll be a double scout for us. So, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely focused on getting back on track, getting guys healthy, get everybody keyed up, prepared, ready to go for next week. This is a team that when they came to Southeastern last year, they had some pretty dynamic players on offense. What are some of the things that stand out to you here in the early preliminary scouting that you have of the Tigers? Well, the biggest thing that we see in, uh, in Edward Waters is their athletic ability, and that's something that... Uh, you know, it, it doesn't take a, you know, a veteran coach to see. Anybody can see that they've got athletes and they've got people that can play. Uh, we just hope that, uh, you know, our matchups will, will work well for us on, on Saturday a week from now. So uh, we are, we're just going to uh, uh, do the same things that we've been going and doing against other teams. You know, Concordia had outstanding athletes. Concordia, you know, in my opinion, was the fastest team that we mm -hmm. played this year. Now, defensively, they're – their pursuit was unbelievable. I hope we don't play a team as fast, but if there is a team as fast, it'll be Edward Waters. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much for your time today. Best of luck this week and enjoy your bye week. Thank you, Donnie. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Coach Bearfield Show. Make sure you join us again next time after the fire take on Edward Waters. This is the Coach Bearfield Show from Southeastern University home of fire football.